there's just lots of strange things kind of happen. Cups and saucers downstairs, rattling out the back, like the lift going up and down, hoovers being turned on, just wee strange things. We're here on the stone stairwell of the fourth floor of Ballydigan Mill and I'm here with Warren Coates from the Northern Ireland Paranormal Research Association. You're here doing a bit of work, you're here looking for sounds and visions and all sorts of things. We are indeed. Well, we're lucky we started an investigation here in the middle of last year and conducted several investigations and now we started again about five weeks ago and within that five weeks already some of the activity we're getting is amazing. We're hearing a, a woman groan, a woman's groan, very, very long groan, going off maybe three or four seconds. Doors open and closing. Now, one of the doors that opens and closes is actually locked, closed, and this door slams, and you can hear it slamming. Voices, you can hear voices, and lights that float around the, the room. One of the common stories here is a young boy with a candle. Now, we have experienced the presence of the young boy. We've never seen him with a candle or anything. Another thing you hear is footsteps up above us. Some of the things we use, uh, I've just brought down a selection of stuff for you. Start off with the camcorders. Dark locations we would have our normal camcorder with night shot. If you go into a room that's dark, any light particles that's about, this sort of gets it and magnifies it. Right, so it does. So work in very, very low light. They do. What's the, right. what's the big walkie-talkie thing here? That there is an environment meter for temperature. And what are all these wee things here? These are all like wee clocks? Well, yeah, they're, they're, wee they're, transmitters. Yeah, they're, they're actually motion detectors, just like what you would get in a normal uh, sort of household burglar sensors. alarm. Yeah, right. you know, we would have them set up just in case there's any, anything sort of breaks one of the beams. And how does it work then when you bring all this stuff to Ballydugan Mill, you come in here, obviously you'd know by looking at it that this was an old mill, wooden floor, wooden beams, uh, wooden rafters up above us, and then those wee small windows, but kind of dark in here as it is. And I'd imagine sitting up here at night would be scary enough. It's not so much fear, it's, it's every place has its own sort of noises it makes, natural ambience sounds. We would go on but try and sort of rule out all natural explanations first. Mm -hmm. You know, and then if we're, if we're left with that sort of, and we, can, we still can't prove it, then we start looking into the, the paranormal feature. So if we sat here in peace and quiet and didn't move and kind of switched on some of the gear, do you think now you would see something or hear something well, or feel something? There's every possibility chance. It's not like most haunted where everything, every time you switch a camera on, something happens. You know, I mean, we deal with genuine paranormal, you know, and if they don't want to come and show themselves or do something, they don't have to. So mm -hmm. you could sit here for hours now and nothing happens, or you could sit for five minutes and the activity starts straight away. Spirit Francis in this room, can you please come forward now and make yourselves known to us? If you can, can you please show us sign? Can you please touch one of us present? Can you please knock a door and make a banging noise for us? Would our friends in the spur world now please come forward? Will you please come forward and communicate with us? If you can make a noise, or if you can open a door or close the door, please do so now. If there's any spirits, the female spirit, male spirit, who've passed through this place over the last hundred years, two hundred years, and you want to show yourself today, rattle a door, open the door, flick on the lights, approach one of us, or you can text us on 81771, or you can call 0845 or you can email Saturday Magazine at bbc.co.uk. <laughs> <laughs> That was the producer at the end, I have to say, just just as we're all sitting around. That's only good training. I mean, you think, but, you know, the, 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 that was Warren Coates from the Northern Ireland Paranormal yeah. Re Research Association. I'm here with Hugh Gallagher and Elaine Floyd from Capra, which is the County Antrim Paranormal Research Association, and Mike Hirons from Paranormal Ulster. Um, it's quite an experience, though, when you're sitting there, you know, because and people are sceptical and people say it's a load of nonsense and all this, but actually when you're sitting there uh, in that place, it was daytime as well. It wasn't, yeah. you know, it's not the dark of night. But you're, you're wait, you are waiting for something, and even the experience of just sitting quietly, listening to yourself breathing, listening to your own heartbeat, uh, is a is a restful thing. And waiting, you're waiting for some something to jolt you out of your. It, it, when you do, how do you do what you do, Elaine? When you go to these places, because you were you were doing one of these last night. 
will not say where, but you were. Yes, you just have to go with an open mind. Me personally, I like to go and get a feel of a place after I've done the research and you know find out exactly what's going on in mm. the place according to the client. Um, we just go in and you just set yourself down and just go around and get an ambience and feel myself if there's anything going on and then just go and do a protocol. We just go into asking out our EVP sessions after our baselines and everything and, and we just get tour in really. And how many, you know, how many times do you go out and you do this kind of thing out of the proportion, say you go out 10 times, how many times would you find something something happens and how many times doesn't? Because programs like Most Haunted yeah. yes. make you think all you do is turn up, switch the camera on and there's a ghost. Yes, there's you, a do, you don't get something every time you go out. It just doesn't happen like that. It's not like Most Haunted at all. In fact, a lot of the time it's extremely boring because you're sitting there waiting for something to happen. Um, I would say about one in every four cases we get something. And do you have to be a certain type of person to do this? Why do you do what you do, the <clears> three of you? My, my, if I can come in on there, John, being I'm a very spiritual person, albeit I bring scientific uh, elements into the investigation, I do believe you have to be, my opinion, obviously different from maybe, you know, the sceptics or the, even the big scientific community out there. I do believe that you have to have some sort of belief, some sort of link with the, with, with the spiritual world. Um, what I do when I go into an investigation, before I bring out all the equipment and everything, we sit down as a team and we bond mm -hmm. and we relax like the guys were just saying they're nice and relaxed and we actually build up the energy it's a spiritual sort of circle mm -hmm. work that we do and we bring in the energy we actually charge the area up with energy too. and why do you do it you i do it because first of all my first experience i'm not saying it was paranormal but 20 years ago you might want to call it a, an experience i was lying in bed and my wife was beside me with her back turned to me and i heard somebody whistle on the right hand side just like somebody whistling it wasn't in me ear, but it was close to me ear. and i turned around and she turned around to me and she said was that you i says no i thought that was you and it wasn't and i basically sat up all night wondering in shock a bit of shock really what it was we'd heard at that time you know i just couldn't fathom what it was and then on i've always had a sort of interest to try and find out what it was that I'd heard and, and why it happened and I think as the time's gone on I, my interest has got more and more to where the point came where we decided to form our own group and know, that's the point the point is there are things that we yeah. don't whether you believe in the paranormal yeah. whether you, whatever you believe in whatever religion or if you believe in religion or no religion whatever you believe in there are things we don't understand yeah. and some people are kind of asking the questions and maybe other people just aren't interested in and that's that's kind of the way it is we've yeah. set you to a challenge of of sorts right uh, elaine and you because you're gonna have we look around this place and get a feel for these studios and see if there's if there's anything in here if there's anything you know because there's enough okay. people come in and out of here cool. all the time no problem between no. now and the end of the program we're finished at 12 and we'll come back to you about 12 o'clock and see if you've sensed anything or if, I don't know found anything or what's the word kind of just got got a feeling for yeah. anything in this room or any of the other studios in this kind of complex up at the top of broadcasting okay. house yes fair yeah. enough yeah yes. okay Elaine Floyd and Hugh Gallagher we're going to talk to you later from uh, okay. Capra